From being caught using an illegal stick during the playoffs to being penalized for wearing your visor wrong, here are seven times when NHL players were handed a penalty for illegal equipment. Before we get into it, we'd just like to start this list off with an honorable mention. Because although they didn't have a penalty, this rule is so ridiculous that it still managed to stop the game for minutes. The Hurricanes goaltender Anderson was ridiculed by the Ducks for having illegal tape on his stick, his knob to be exact. And this is because the NHL actually has a rule requiring all goalies to use only white tape on the knob of their sticks. Though this rule is absolutely absurd nowadays, in the early days of hockey this made sense, because goal judges were heavily relied on for calling goals. And these goal judges were far less likely to call bad goals if the goalie's knob was white. Now, the color of the knob should not matter thanks to multiple angles within the net to see if the puck truly crossed the goal line or not. Alright, it's time for the juice because some of these are gonna be sweet. The LA Kings were playing the Montreal Canadiens in the 1993 Stanley Cup Finals. It was game 2 of the series and the Kings were winning 2-1 with a minute and 45 remaining. Out of seemingly nowhere, Jacques Demers calls the ref over to complain about the curve of Marty McSorley's stick. The ref grabbed his measuring tape and started to measure the curve of the stick, and found out that it was indeed illegal, and he was sent to the box for two minutes for an illegal equipment penalty. The Canadians would score on this power play to tie the game up and then score in overtime to win game 2. Although the illegal stick was in the early round of games, the Canadians would still end up winning the Stanley Cup. And Kings fans, if it makes you feel any better, McSorley would actually go on to admit that he knew it was an illegal stick blade, but how Demers found out was quite interesting. Allegedly, a Montreal policeman reached out to the Kings to say he was bothered by an incident that happened during the playoffs. He stated that he was told to leave his post for a few minutes between periods so the Canadians could examine the stick of the Kings players. Former Canadians athletic therapist Lefebvre would later state that he was one of the Canadians players who had told the head coach Demers McSorley could be using an illegal stick. But no matter how it was found out that he was using an illegal stick, it still hits the nerve of some King fans. The stick measurement has been called. It's a two minute penalty to LA if it's illegal and it's a two minute penalty to Montreal if it's Bobby Ryan will forever go down as the only player to savagely score a goal using his opponent's stick. Wilds forward Miko Koivu would steal the stick of Ryan out of his own hands, and he regretted it instantly. Ryan would pick up Koivu's stick and proceed to score a goal while doing a clever selly after. But we're probably never going to see another moment like this because the NHL deems it illegal to use a stick that belongs to the opposing team. There it is at his feet so that he could pick it up and when the rebound came his way, he says thank you very much. And the Capitals Kuznetsov actually fell victim to being penalized for just trying to be in the play. The Golden Knights Howden would get his stick stuck in the glass and Kuznetsov would end up losing his stick when he went to play the puck in the corner. Kuznetsov grabbed Howden's stick that was dangling in the boards and continued the play. Kuznetsov would end up being slapped with an illegal equipment penalty. Kuzi also dropped his stick on the ice. Instead of grabbing his own, he grabs Holden. The Sharks head coach Ron Wilson had a knack for sniffing out illegal sticks. He had all game to call it the Ducks Timu Solani for using an illegal blade, but he decided to wait until the perfect time. Let's just say, when the game goes into overtime and the opponent has a power play. Here in overtime, Wilson drew attention to Solani's stick and when he was penalized, the Ducks no longer had a power play. The Sharks would end up winning the game in a shootout and both Solani and Wilson would speak about the incident after the game. Solani made up a hilarious excuse saying that the players would need to alter their sticks to hold on to the pucks because of the poor ice conditions. Is this implying that the entire team was using an illegal stick? And if so, why weren't the Sharks? Interestingly enough though, Wilson also had a pretty funny reaction. He said that we just had an inkling that a stick may be too wide. When you look at it, it's almost the length of a goalie stick. I was rolling the dice and I'd figure I'd do it in overtime and it worked. If I were him, I'd probably just say, oh, I only noticed it just then. All right, now it's time for the Jason Spezza news. Although this is old news by now. Jason Spezza was caught using an illegal blade when the Senators were playing the Maple Leafs back in 09. 
While down by a goal with a minute to play, the Leafs head coach requested the stick of Spezza to be measured for an illegal curve or thickness. And you'll never guess who the coach of this one was. Before we drop the puck on this one, let us know in the comments section just who do you think it was. Well, we told you this guy had a knack for sniffing out illegal sticks, but he should have been using his power to sniff out salts and hey, maybe he'd be a Hall of Fame hockey player. But hey, if you guessed Ron Wilson, you sure are on your A-game right now because he was the exact same guy who called out Solani. But get this. When Spezza was accused, he just stepped on his stick and went to the bench to get a replacement. The official, of course, made Spezza hand over the stick that he had just broken so he could still go and measure it. You don't have to be a fortune teller to guess that his stick indeed was illegal and Spezza had a nice vacation to the box. But the Leafs being the Leafs could not score on this power play and still lost the game by one. Maybe the hockey gods were watching this game and were telling Wilson that he should have done it in the beginning rather than when they were already losing. And it's pretty pathetic that he waited until March to say something when they only played each other a few times that season. Ron Wilson indicates to Curtis Joseph with three fingers at 1-3-0, you get back to the bench. But even young superstars are not prone to getting away with a legal stick penalty. Just ask Trevor Zegras. Three years into his NHL career, he found out that stealing your opponent's stick is not allowed at all. Zegras and Kiviranta were engaged in a battle and Zegras broke his stick across the back of Kiviranta. He then stole the stick and skated towards the front of the net. The ref called a penalty on Zegras who was visually upset with this call. The only question I have about this process is how Zegras has such a lack of responsibility or accountability for his own actions. He acted like he had no idea why he was being penalized in the first place and he had to be reminded that the stick in his hands belonged to Kivaranta. But this penalty probably ended Ended up helping him because he was having a meltdown moment and really he just needed to relax. So it's Kiwi Ronta, so he just goes over and grabs his stick and says, I'm gonna play with your stick. This one is pretty funny. The NHL would even go out of their way to apologize for this mistake. The Blues were taking on the Avalanche. It was overtime when Vladimir Tarasenko would be handed a strange penalty. Pareko went to stick check the Avalanche player and he lost his stick in the process. Tarasenko handed Pareko his stick because defensive players are more important than offensive players when in their own zone. Tarasenko would try to play defense in his own zone without a stick for about 30 seconds. Pareko would yell at Tarasenko to grab his stick that was just lying in the corner. But when Tarasenko grabbed his stick and the Blues still had possession of the puck, the referee called the play dead for a penalty. Normally, you can use your teammate's stick whenever you want, but if they're a giant, I guess it's a no-no. Pareko is 6'6", six six, and he has to use what the NHL considers an oversized stick. With that being said, Pareko had to get permission from the NHL to even play with his stick, and only 6'6 six six players and taller could use these exempt sticks. So when Tarasenko picked up the stick, it became an illegal stick, thus causing him to be penalized for two minutes for his illegal equipment usage. Kendrick Nicholson just keeps pointing to send Tarasenko to the box and there he goes. Now I just gotta give the refs a round of applause because hey, they caught something. They may be blind in every other important moment of the game, but here they were spot on. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. Komarov was once penalized because somehow he didn't put his visor on the right way. Yes. There's a correct way to use your visor when playing in the NHL. He was always known for looking a little bit silly when on the ice because he always wore his visor up on his helmet prior to this incident. But during the 2017 preseason, officials instructed Komarov to either lower his visor or remove it altogether. Komarov selected to have the visor removed to follow the rules but stated that he didn't feel safe without it. So in the following game, he decided he wanted to look like a goon once more and put the helmet back on the way he normally did. But this time, he was immediately slapped with a penalty for illegal equipment. It might sound like a joke, but he really was penalized for a visor violation. The NHL claimed that the visors were to be worn to ensure adequate eye protection. But he was allowed to play without one? Okay, well, I guess that makes sense, right? Oh, he oh, gave him the warning and yeah. oh my gosh, right in the middle of play. Well, anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to leave a comment if we missed anything. And never be afraid to leave a suggestion just telling us what you want to see. Speaking of those meltdown moments earlier, if you haven't checked out that video, click the video on the screen. And as always, 
If you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and see you next time.